May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect all of us. If you want goodness, if you want your children to respect you and to obey you and to be kind to you, you need to learn to obey Allah. You need to learn to please Allah and your children, inshallah, will please you by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We also ask every child who is here today to take a moment we ask every child who is here today, whose parents are alive, to take a moment to either visit them later today or to make a phone call. To make a phone call as soon as we're done here to your mother and father or one of them or both of them and just tell them, I love you. I really, really miss you. And I want to appreciate the fact that you brought me up when I was little and you really sacrificed for me. May Allah have mercy on you. Will we do that? MashaAllah, that was quite a good yes. Alhamdulillah. Trust me, it will change your life. Do you know why? The mercy of Allah automatically descends upon a person who tries to make his or her parents happy. When the rahma of Allah you are asking that Allah has mercy on your parents. The angels are saying, Oh Allah, have a double mercy on this particular person. And the dua of the angels is much more powerful than your dua. Remember that, my beloved brothers and sisters. So today, don't forget, even if you're listening to this lecture later on, today, the day that you're listening to it, make a phone call to your parents right now. Send them a message right now. Tell them how much you love them. Tell them you appreciate the fact that they brought you up. Make dua for their mercy. May Allah have mercy on you, my beloved parents. And may Allah open your doors. That's all. What did it cost you? Nothing. Even if you have a disagreement with your parents, you still do that. See the wonders that it works. And then get into the habit of sending that message every single week, at least, if not every day. Subhanallah. Your life will change because when Allah instructed you to do something and you did it, you are not only obeying the instruction of Allah that would actually bring about His mercy, but you're making someone happy. You make someone happy, Allah will make you happy. You make your parents happy, Allah will make you even more happy. When you have a bad habit, say pornography, say adultery, extremely bad. In the case of adultery, major sin. In the case of pornography, minor sin. But it's still a sin. And I want to tell you something. When you have a bad habit of this nature, and you want to eradicate it, and you have told yourself no more, a day will come when you might slip up again, right? You might drop again because you know what? You're a human. On that day, don't think, ah, I blew it. That's it. Now I'm back to my old ways. You're not. You're not back to your old ways. No. If you blew it one day, at least you did better. You used to do it every day before. Now it happened today, but you're going to turn back to Allah immediately and say, you, you seek forgiveness once again, and you're not going to do it again. And you stop it. So the gap between your falling would be bigger and bigger until a day will come when you will totally stop it. You get the point? Shaitan makes you lose hope. So if you said right from today, I'm not going to commit the sin anymore. And a month later you dropped. Shaitan says, you see, you're back to where you were. So then you're going, you, Shaitan might make you say, well, it's okay. Now I'm just going to go back because you know what? I'm too weak and I, I just can't do this. No, you can. You can, you will, you shall and you must. If you fell a month later, get up, seek the forgiveness of Allah. You might fall six months later. How's the gap? Bigger. Is that an improvement? It's like smoking three cigarettes from 30. You see, big improvement. After that, you might fall a year later. What happened? You must get up immediately and promise Allah that you're going to stop it and you're not going to do it again. That's the condition. Then you can eradicate that bad habit. Otherwise, if you're going to give up every time you fall, we all fall. We all fall, myself included. We are human beings. We will fall. Allah wants you to be dedicated. If you missed one salah, does it mean you must stop all your salahs? No. 
You might miss it even if you are regular with your salah. You're a human being. The Prophet says you may sleep a little bit sometimes much and you might not realize that the time of salah has crossed as soon as you get up, fulfill your salah. Or you might suffer with forgetfulness at a time. It's possible. You were busy doing something and you forgot. That's a hadith of the Prophet Whoever sleeps over a prayer or forgets a prayer should fulfill it or should do the qada as soon as they remember, as soon as they can. It's a simple hadith. He didn't say that's a bad person because you're a human. But the point I'm raising is in the same way when you are trying to get rid of a bad habit, you might falter somewhere down the line. Don't let that be a means of you giving up, but rather get up and continue for longer without that bad habit. In the same way that if you were to miss a salah, you won't just throw in the towel and say no more salah for me because I missed one. But rather you will make sure you do the qada, you seek Allah's forgiveness, you continue further and you try your best not to miss a salah. Perhaps years will pass and you wouldn't have missed a salah. May Allah keep us all strong. I repeat that when you have fallen because you're a human being and if you've fallen because you're a human being, remember one thing. Turn back to Allah through istighfar and don't lose hope in the mercy of Allah. When Allah has placed you in a certain situation of hardship, that is your test. That is your test. You can never tell the examiner this question is unacceptable. You might find it a little bit difficult, but with the help of Allah, nothing is difficult. Look at the Prophet ﷺ when they first revealed to him, when Allah revealed to him, Iqara. What did he say? Ma ana biqari. He was told, read. He just politely responded, I'm not a qari, not a reader. Iqara. Again, I'm not a reader. Ma ana biqari. Guess what he was told after that? Verses were revealed. Read in the name of your Lord who created. What does that mean? That means if you think you cannot do something, you read in the name of your Lord, the minute you take the name of Allah, you are able to do it. It will become easy for you. That's why as Muslims, what, do, what are we taught? We're taught that everything you do, say Bismillah. Bismillah. Before you eat, Bismillah. You open the door of the motor vehicle, Bismillah. You go somewhere, you do something, Bismillah. Why? Because it is only with the name of Allah that everything is made easy. And with the same name of Allah, nobody can harm you, nothing can hurt you, nothing in the heavens or the earth, in the skies, should I say, or the earth can ever harm you. Bismillah. الذي لا يضر مع اسمه شيء في الأرض ولا في السماء وهو السميع العليم. I take the name of Allah with whose name nothing can harm me on earth or in the skies, and He is all hearing, all knowing. That's a powerful du'a. Thank you so much for listening to the short message. I pray that it has increased you in a little bit of motivation and hope. And the same applies to all of us. Jazakumullah khair. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.